Hi guys, today we're going to see how we can deal with one of the most common uh, models that you would encounter if you ever start modeling furniture, especially older furniture or even today's furniture that has twisted or turned legs. When I say turned legs, it means furniture that has something like this. So. If you want to get a better idea on what kind of furniture this is, simply just go into Google, type in turned legs or turned furniture, set your image size larger than two megapixels, and you can just scroll around and get an idea of what kind of tables or what kind of chairs uh, are made with this kind of techniques. So you can see we have quite a bit of different chairs uh, some tables we have Well, let's see what else we got here's some nice just just the legs We have here's a nice sofa and all of these have one thing in common and that's the fact that they use turned legs now, let's see how we can model um, These kind of legs for this portion or this video I want to go ahead and explain to you how you can model the most common uh, models that are shown on this image over here now before I start as you probably just saw on the web page, uh, web page that I was on I would advise you to download this script it's called loop regularizer you can get it down from uh, script spot but I'll leave a link on the site so all you have to do is go ahead and download it and the reason why it's going to be fairly uh, self-explanatory as soon as you start modeling you're gonna see how much uh, use you can get out of this script so for now let's jump into max so what I have here what I've done here is I've taken this image that I got it from Google I've placed it on a plane and I've simply just added one um, diffuse map in this material and added it here now the reason why I can't select it is because I've frozen it let me just show you how and freeze all so there we go I select it right click on it go object properties in the general tab click freeze but make sure you click this as well show frozen in gray so if this thing is unticked then it will not be gray so it's going to uh, retain the map so click OK and there we go. Now it's staying in the background and we cannot select it. So let's begin. First, I would like to start with the most obvious one or the easiest one and that would be this guy over here. Now, even though it does look fairly simple, let's see how easy it actually is to make it. So for this one, I'm simply gonna go ahead and start with a box. So click on the side, drag, there we go, something like this. And I'm gonna go ahead, make sure it's one, 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 and make my shaded viewport. Now, uh, one thing that you might um, see here is that the parameters that I'm using are for a rather large scale so these wouldn't be 40 centimeters by 60 centimeters but the reason for this is that i simply prefer working on a, a larger scale because there will be no uh, no chances that i have to deal with very very small values for chamfer or extrude when i start working so it won't be a problem and later on when i'm finished i can scale it down to get it to the right position for now i'm just going to leave it like this on a larger scale and for this i'm just going to right click and convert it to an edible poly so pull it down till about here now i have to compensate for the fact that this has been turned or rotated a bit so all right let me just go ahead here whoops here's my first problem and um, Control z so i'm going to try and make this uniform so I want to retain the actual width here. The length is not an issue. All right, so let's go with 60. 
version now 65 by 65 that way we get something like this a box basically so convert it to an edible poly scroll down or rotate down and delete the lower part this is because I want to extrude and pull away the, the bottom part so I can freely model so I'm gonna hold down shift here because you can see there is an indention here so I'm gonna hold down shift once like this then I can see there, there's one more piece that's uh, sticking out so I'm gonna hold down shift one more time and get it to about here now this is what I'm gonna do uh, since this part is more inwards I'm gonna go and select the scale hold down shift and turn it inwards and once I pull it down we can see how yep there you go this is good so far so hold down shift one more time pull it downwards still about here don't worry about the fact that uh, this is wider for for example I'm gonna make it see-through so you can see the original so I'm gonna hold down alt X it's going to uh, allow me to see what's behind it and we can see that uh, the part here is quite a bit thinner or slimmer than what we have here but don't worry about it because we're gonna fix it in a minute and I'm gonna show you exactly how I just want to make sure that I can encompass all of these details so hold on shift hold on once more and again one more time hold on shift with the scale Pull it downwards, make sure it's about this size, and pull it downwards one more time. I'm going to scale it down a bit on the bottom until I get something like this. All right, so let's see what we have here. All right, we have the base for this. Now, I want to put in the extra details I see here so for now since I'm finished with this I can just pull it at the side a bit so I can see it better something like this and here we go let's start first thing I want to get this thing inside so I'm gonna select one of the edges here and go ring or alt R for the ring and one simple connect when, once we have the connect we can just simply scale it in so with the scale in uniform scale, just pull it in until you get something like this. Now we're going to do the same thing on this portion here. Just hold on Alt R till we get a, a ring around. Hit connect once. And this time around, just pull it outwards. So it's sticking out like this. Now the thing here is that I want to uh, utilize the help of turbo smooth so that means I'm gonna have to add a few more edges to help me with retaining the shape of this entire form let me just show you what happens if I put a turbo smooth right now this entire form is lost and it's turning into a cylindrical shape so just so that this doesn't happen we're gonna have to add a few more support edges and the way we do this is first I'm gonna delete the top part as well just so it's easier I'm delete it lower so select one of these guys ring it and loop it so that way we have all the edges selected on the sides so now since we want to use turbo smooth we're gonna have to chamfer these guys with a small amount and put in two something like this and click OK so by doing this we basically if we put on a turbo smooth right now we're gonna get a different result so we can see that it's retaining the original form of the cube but if we put on two iterations you can see that better but now we have something here that's starting to resemble the form that we have originally for this we've chosen originally for this thing now let's see how we can make this better by simply adding a few more loops over here now 
I can go ahead and choose, uh, I actually select all of these edges. I can go with the connect and then basically just like move it around or I can go ahead and use one of Max's very, very powerful tools, which is hidden over here called Swift Loop. Swift Loop is basically your run of the mill uh, edge adding uh, utility. All you got to do is click on Swift Loop and then mouse over where you want to add the extra edge. Now I have this uh, option set up as, uh, as a hotkey. So whenever I want to uh, get to it, I just press my hotkey and I get right to it. So I can just add one here then another one over here to help me with retaining this piece over here. So one more here and another here. So this should help me get this nice transition as you can see here. So we got that part, the same way to model uh, the upper portion. We're going to use the same technique to use it uh, to get this result. So again, simply just select these guys, go ahead with the connect once, scale it outwards. But in this case, I can see that it has a flat surface over here. So I want to select with actually I don't want to select because I already have it selected but here I want to go ahead and chamfer this line so this time I'm just going to use one here so again click OK now with the swift loop I'm going to put one edge over here another one on the bottom and I'm going to come here and where I've just chamfered this line I'm going to put one above it and one below it. Now th these should help with the turbo smooth modifier like this. And there we go. So we've managed to make something like this. Now let's see how we can get this portion over here to resemble more to our model. So all right, let's go ahead. In order to get the needed details over here, I'm simply going to choose all of my edges in the middle and I'm going to hit the connect and I'm going to put in like maybe five um, or maybe even six segments over here. Now, the reason for this is that I want to get more geometry in here so I can better capture this transition. Now, the logical way that we would uh, get to do something like this would probably the first thing that you would think would be select one of the middle ones then uh, scale it outwards select two of the smaller ones then uh, scale them out just a tad bit more then select these something like this and with this something like this and even if you leave it like this, it's not wrong. It can work. It's, it can pass. But the problem is when you're doing this uh, manually, you might end up in a problem where uh, one of the ones that uh, you've selected, one of the edges, wasn't correctly moved or it's out of sync. And it can give you some weird, like if you look at it, this, uh, this side, it has a tiny, tiny indentation over here on this side rather than uh, having a nice flow. So in order to not have to do it this way, the manual way, there's a way you can do this on the easier way and get a much more controlled end result. And the way to do it is simple. Plus, I would love to show you this uh, way of modeling. Max has a very large uh, modifier list that you can use for all your modeling. But the thing that a lot of guys or girls uh, kind of tend to miss out is the fact that you can choose where you want to add your modifiers. It doesn't always have to go over the entire model. For example, I can select this portion over here or just select the entire lower portion over here and then go here 
and since this thing is tapered from the top to the bottom, I can go over in the modifier, click on T and choose taper. Now, when you click it, by default, you're going to see this uh, orange border. And we have something in the parameters like an amount and a curve. So let's put in a bit of an amount here and the curve. Now, the thing is, at this moment, all this tapering is happening in the wrong or the, not the axis that we wanted to work in. So we have to change the axis. So let's scroll up. Oh, here we go. Once we get on the Y axis over here, the tapering is happening in an interesting way. As you can see here, the tapering is only happening on the polygons that we have selected. So now we basically have total control on how we want this taper to happen. So we can make it thinner on the bottom, we can make it thicker on the bottom and thinner on the top. So you have a choice on how you want this thing to work. The amount is going to control how much of that effect is happening. Now. The other great thing about it is, for example, if you look at it this uh, at this side, the tapering doesn't start from the top. It starts from just a, a bit lower. So I'm going to go ahead and do something like this. And in the taper, choose a gizmo. With the move tool, just move the gizmo either downwards or upwards until you get the desired result. Something like this can work. And then you can either make it like this. You basically, you can play around until you get the desired effect. There we go, something like this. I can choose the effect on which side I wanna have it. The X, Z, all right. And with this, I'm gonna finish it. So the way to see if this taper has been done on the entire model is by simply checking out this box over here if you have this box this means that this taper modifier it's only affecting the chosen polygons that you have in this poly or this edible poly so if you want to continue on from on top of this we simply add on another edit poly and we can continue modeling but for this, if we put on a turbo smooth, put in two iterations, there we go. This can be used for any kind of furniture that uses this kinds of turned legs. So let's, for now, let's continue on to the second uh, type of turned legs.